Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Advanced Mathematics of Class 10 and we are starting off with a new chapter that is chapter 8 which is plain geometry and today we will be solving one theorem which is theorem 8.1.1 so without wasting any more time, let's get started. So the theorem is based on tangent and chords and the angles formed by that chord on a circle. Now what do I mean by all this? In order to understand those, let us look into the diagram. So what does the theorem say? The theorem says that if there is a circle and there is a tangent drawn at any point, suppose at this point we have drawn a tangent. Now at this point of contact, if I draw any chord in the circle, suppose this is a chord. So let's give it some name. Suppose the point is P, uh, it is Q. So PQ is a chord. Now according to the theorem, the angle formed by the chord with the tangent Suppose this angle, we have two angles here, one is this, one is this one. Acute angles and obtuse angles, two angles we have. So suppose we consider this angle. The angle formed by the chord with the tangent at the point of contact will be equal to the angle formed by the same chord in the opposite segment. Now we have two segments formed by a chord. This chord has divided this circle into two segments. One is this segment and one is the smaller segment. So since the angle is this one, so this, this angle means it falls under this segment. What we want to do, we want to see the angle formed by this chord in the opposite segment. So if this is the angle with the tangent, then the angle formed by the chord in the opposite segment means something like this. So here what do we have? We have seen there is a chord PQ which is forming an angle this, so this is the angle, suppose P, Q and this is Y, suppose X, Y is the tangent. So Q, P, Y is the angle formed by the chord with the tangent. This angle will be equal to this angle. What is this angle? This is the angle formed by the chord in the opposite segment. So since this is the angle, the angle it will be equal to is this one in the opposite segment. What is the other way around? See if P, Q is the chord, this time let us not consider this angle. Let us consider this angle, the bigger angle. In this case, what will happen? Now, the what, which is the opposite segment? Now, for this, we are not considering this one. Okay. So, now this is the chord. This is the angle formed by the chord with the tangent. In this case, this is the adjacent segment. But the opposite segment is this one. So, we need this chord needs to form an angle out here. Okay. Then this angle will be equal to this angle. Hope you understand. So this large big angle will be equal to this angle and this angle formed by the same chord will also be equal to this angle. So you have this one equal to this one and this one equal to this one. So hope you understand. So the theorem says that if there is a chord drawn at the point of contact of a tangent on the same circle, chord drawn on the point of contact of of a tangent on the same circle then in that case the angle formed by the chord with the tangent the angles formed means one is this angle and the other is this angle these angles formed by the chord with the tangent will be equal to the to respectively the angles on the opposite segment of the chord that means if this is the chord this is the angle then on the opposite segment, the angle that is formed will be equal to that. And if this is the angle, then opposite to this segment means this one. This is the angle, opposite segment is this one. So these two will be equal and these two will be equal. Now we need to prove this. So let us try and prove this theorem. So we'll draw the same diagram. We have a tangent here. Let's just draw a chord. Now let us draw one angle at the chord. On the larger segment we draw one and on the smaller segment we draw another angle. Okay, so now we have this one as the chord, suppose PQ, let's give this name XY. And uh, so PQ, suppose this is R and S. Okay, so this is our diagram. We also need to draw one more thing. Suppose this is the diameter, here we have the center O, PQRS, suppose this T, okay, we will join these two as well. 
okay so what do we have here we have pq as the chord angle prq is one angle on one side of the segment and psq is another angle on the other segment here we have qpy as one of the angles formed by the chord with the tangent and another angle is this one qpx okay so we have to prove that this qpy is equal to prq and we have to prove pq a qpx is equal to qsp okay so what do we have to do this is theorem 8.1.1 okay so we have to prove what i have just mentioned now now pt is the diameter passing through the center o so let us start so what do we do here as we have seen or you may see in circles that if there is a circle and there is a diameter passing then the angle formed by this diameter any angle on the circle any angle all these angles means this angle this angle this angle any angle formed by the diameter on any segment are always 90 degree means this will be 90 this will be 90 this will be 90 so here what do we have pt is the diameter so pqt this angle will be 90 degree angle formed on any segment by the diameter so this is this is the diameter this is the angle formed by the diameter on the circle so angle q that is tqp will be 90 degree so this is one thing that we have so let us first write what we have here let x y be the tangent at p tangent at p pq is the chord PT is the diameter passing through O that is the center okay so these things we have what we have to prove we have to prove that angle QPY angle QPY is equal to angle PRQ PRQ and also this is one part the second part is qpx qpx must be equal to psq psq these two things we have to prove so let us start with the proof so as i said this must be 90 degree so since angle pqt is the angle formed by the diameter on the circle therefore angle PQT must be equal to 90 degree okay now in triangle PTQ if this angle is 90 then the sum of these two angles will also be 90 right so therefore in triangle PQT we must have Some of the three angles is 180, right? So if one of the angles is 90, that means we are left with only 90. So these two, sum of these two angles will be 90. So therefore, angle PTQ plus angle TPQ are equal to 90 degree. Let's take this as number one. Okay, so we have two angles as 90. Now if you look into another one, this is the tangent and this is, uh, sorry, I mean this is the diameter and this is the tangent. Now always the angle formed by the tangent with the diameter is always 90 degree. So if this is the circle and here is the tangent and this is the diameter, this angle is always 90 degree. Okay, so here angle TPY, TPY will be equal to 90 degree since it is the angle formed by the diameter with the tangent. So if we split TPY into two angles, we can write TPQ, angle TPQ plus angle QPY equal to 90. I have split TPY into TPQ and QPY. TPQ and QPY, these two parts, this part and this part. Fair enough, let's take this as number two. So from one and two, what do we have? Both are 90. So that means LHS will be equal to this LHS. So let us write angle PTQ plus angle TPQ equal to angle TPQ plus angle QPY, which implies TPQ, TPQ will cancel. So we have angle 
पी टी क्यू इक्वल टू एंगल क्यू पी वाई लेट्स टेक दिस एज नंबर थ्री नाउ वॉट डू वी हैव सो वी हैव वॉट पी टी क्यू दैट मीन्स दिस एंगल पी टी क्यू एंड क्यू पी वाई आर इक्वल दिस एंगल एंड दिस एंगल आर इक्वल वी हैव प्रूफ नाउ लुक इन टू अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग हियर पी क्यू इज द कॉड ओके and prq and ptq are two angles on the same side of the chord on the same chord that means these two angles will be equal i hope you know this if this is a circle here we have a chord and this chord forms suppose these two angles on the circle so if there are two angles formed on the same chord on the same segment then these two angles are always equal so therefore since angle prq and angle ptq are on the are formed on the same chord therefore angle prq will be equal to angle ptq let's take this as number 4 so from 3 and 4 what do we have from 3 and 4 we have see ptq and qpy here ptq and prq that means prq and qpy must be equal so here we have angle qpy equal to angle prq see we have done number 1 so what we have proved is this was equal to this one then we have proved this is equal to this that means this angle must be equal to this angle so first part we have proved i hope it is clear to you very simple it just looks very complex the the ideas that we have used the th the concepts that we have used are very simple either it is 90 degree because it forms an angle here then the other two angles will be 90 so the, all the concepts that we are going to use are going to be very simple it just it will look complex just try to keep a straight head and keep on solving you will get the result so first part we have done now let's move on to the next part which is this one this one we have to prove let me keep this part here let me change from here okay so what do we have now for the second part we have to prove qpx that is qpx this larger angle is equal to psq that is this angle at the smaller segment now if you look carefully psqr this is a cyclic quadrilateral so here P S Q R is a cyclic quadrilateral. In case of cyclic quadrilaterals, the opposite angles, the sum of the opposite angles is always 180. So I can write P S Q and P R Q. These are opposite angles of this cyclic quadrilateral. These are opposite angles, so sum of these two angles will be 180. So therefore, angle P R Q plus angle P S Q will be equal to 180 degree we can take this as number 5 okay one part done now what we can do is we can say that again this angle and this angle if we add this up it is also 180 because x p y the whole thing is a straight line it is a uh, 180 degree angle so that if we can split x p y into x p q plus q p y it will also be 180 again Angle XPQ plus angle QPY is also equal to 180. Number six because they are linear pair angle. Okay, that means this plus this, these two angles add it up, you get 180. Now, from five and six, these two parts will be equal because both are 180. So let's write this angle PRQ. Angle PRQ plus angle PSQ is equal to XPQ. Angle XPQ plus angle QPY. Now look, QPY and PRQ are equal. That is PRQ and QPY are equal. So since they are equal, we can cancel them. What we are left with? We are left with angle PSQ equal to angle XPQ. That is C. We can rearrange them. We can write XPQ can be written on the left hand side, which we can write as QPX. Same thing. XPQ QPX is same. Which is equal to angle PSQ, which is this one. QPX, QPX equal to PSQ. So that's how we solve. So we have solved that this angle XBQ and PSQ are equal. 
so that is how you solve the theorem 8.1.1 so using this theorem we are going to solve exercise 8.1 the whole exercise is based on this theorem the sums are different every sum is different from the others some are very easy some are little bit uh, complex so we we'll look into that we will do it together so hope you understood today's theorem this theorem is very important try to understand it properly because once you understand this one the other things are going to be easy so thank you everyone for watching the video and until next time cheers